कलौ निष्ठा दृशमेशा पुराना को दुनो दिता फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर्स गो when the very soft and fragrant lotus feet of sri krishna disappeared from this world when sri krishna disappeared all gyan knowledge and all dharma went along with it so now where will people find shelter so purana ko duno dita the sri mag bhagavatam has arisen like the sun to give vision to the whole world so this is my bhagavatam is krishna brahma murti just as sri krishna is here in the form of his murti so krishna has sound incarnation brahma murti that is sri mad bhagavatam however this sri mad bhagavatam is such a profound masterpiece of vyanjan bhriti vyanjan bhriti means in poetry that the meanings the actual meanings are not directly in the words but in the implications and those implications they cannot be accessed by anyone who has the mundane consciousness materialistic identity it cannot be accessed even by those are mukta purush liberated souls it can only deeply be understood and realized by the nitya parikas eternal associates of radha and krishna and they come into this world along with sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so swarup damodaka swami said jaha bhagavat pada vaishnava rasthani ekantara sai karo chaitanya charan If you want to understand something of Shri Mad Bhagavatam, then you must take complete shelter of the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and sit at the lotus feet of his Gora Priya Jain, very near and dear associates. Chaitanya Rabhakta ka nitya karu sanga thavito jani be siddhanta samudra taranga. So Ramadhar ka Swami said. by regularly daily associating with the gopur priya the very close and near and dear associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who appear in this world as our sri guru parampara only by this gradually gradually tabito janibe siddhanta samudra tanaka one will be able to enter into the waves in the ocean of siddhanta establish transcendental truths Though Shrimad Bhagavatam was in this world for more than 4,000 years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, but only after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and empowered Sri Rupa Goswami Pai and his associates, especially Sri Rupa Goswami Pai, then the actual deep nectar of the Shrimad Bhagavatam. and this especially rasa panchar jai it became available to the world silavish and tabita ko said vit vidva pre nav bhakti sasya vitate sanjeevani satswagata rambe kama tapatu dah dhamani vish vishwa pagoda asi Oh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His mercy is like a vast rain cloud, and it is raining the Maha Madhurya, the great sweetness of Brajalila. just as a, a mass of clouds when it assembles in the rainy season even before it begins to rain then the persons who were suffering from the heat during the summer they feel relief 
So in the same way, when the cloud of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes into our life, even before it begins to rain, we feel the cooling effect, the heat of calm, crowd, lope, lust, anger and greed. These begin to cool down. Ritvapri, Navabhakti Sasya, Vitate. And just as when the rain falls from the cloud, then the seeds which are in the ground, they become enlivened. And they burst out and they begin to grow. So in the same way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when His mercy begins to rain, then the Krishna Seva Vasana, the Bhakti Latavish, the seeds of devotion, appear in the heart of the living entities and they begin to grow. This is amazing. Because there is no seed of devotion in the Jiva. Just like if it will rain and there are no seeds in the ground, nothing will grow. But the rain of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is so miraculous that when the rain falls down, it manifests the seeds and they appear. <laughs> and then they begin to grow. So what is that seed? Krishna Seva Basana. It's a sanskar, impression. It means that we are conditioned by our samskars, our impressions. All of our thoughts, our attitudes, everything, the way we see everything, is just coming from the samskars, deep impressions in our subconscious mind, accrued over many lifetimes. So these are all useless for Bhakti. But when we associate with the Shuddha, Brajrasik, Vaishnavas, and listen with respect, with honor, with the service mood, considering that oh, this is the greatest fortune in my life, then this Shakta Brahma, this sound vibration goes into the ear and <laughs> begins to cause the vicious sanskar, intense impressions that give you a new personality, a transcendental personality, a personality who is very naturally just like Brajabhasis, the eternal residence of Vrindavan. So this is called Garda Sanskar, deep impressions. And they come from here in Harikatha. This is the reign of Mahaprabhu's mercy. The Mahamadhurya Kadamvini, which reveals a sweetness that was never, never distributed before. And just as when the rain falls, then if there are small streams going here and there, they become full and they overflow their banks. And instead of following their courses, they just go everywhere. So similarly, when the rain of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy descends to this world, in Navadvip, in Puri, in Vrindavan, just overflowed and went everywhere, went to Switzerland, went to America, went to Russia, Spain, everywhere. So now, by, in this time, by the mercy of Mahaprabhu, Jan Kali Rupasya Viranudarata Tan Braja Prema Mahanidi Kutarika Konakapata Udkarata Jan Kali Rupasya Viranudarata The mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went into the heart of Rupa Goswami. If Srila Rupa Goswami had not appeared in this world, even though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought with him the great treasure chest of the Mahanidhi, the treasure of Prem, of Gopis of Vrindavan, but it was locked and there was not access. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept the key with Srila Rupa Goswami. And he opened it and began to distribute through his Granta, through his writings, and especially through his Anugatyan, his followers, the Brajrasik Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Varga, the Parampara. This nectar is coming down. It cannot, there cannot be any gap. Because without the Sangha, without the association, without the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental sound, then the samskars will not come. 
which cause one to be qualified to relish the rasa. Praktanaduniki chasti yasya sad bhakti vasana. See that? Rupa Goswami Pai said, unless one has a strong impression, not only from this life, from previous life and this life, then this gives one the adhika for the rasa swadhan, the tasting of rasa. So taking shelter of Gurudev and Gauranga, now we come to the first verse of the Rasa Panchadhyaya. It's important to understand the Prasanga Kram. Prasanga means topic and Kram means sequence. So Shukadev Goswami is speaking in Srimad Bhagavatam each chapter by chapter. But there's a reason the chapters are coming one after another. Because each kata becomes a udipana, a stimulation, which is awakening a particular mood in the heart of Shukadeva Goswami. And then when that mood appears, then he's speaking the next, the next topic. So the prasanga kram of this Rasalina is just before Shukadeva Goswami was describing the Varuna Lok Agaman, the return of Nanda Maharaj and Krishna from the abode of Varuna. It was a Dwadasi day like today, very appropriate for this katha. <laughs> it was a Dwadasi day, and in the evening, Nanda Baba, within the, the time allowed for him to complete his brata, he went with some of his associates to the bank of the Yamuna to take bath there. So he entered into the water of Yamuna and he was remembering his Gayatri Mantra and meditating on Lord Narayan. You know that Nanda Baba worships Narayan. His whole life he used to worship Narayan. But after Krishna was born, then he became very much more serious about his puja to Lord Narayan. <laughs> Why? Because he was always praying. Oh Lord Narayan, protect my son. That my son should always be safe and happy. <coughs> so it, that's called the Sakam Bhakti. Bhakti with the desires, material desires. <laughs> you pray to God for your family members, it's Bhakti with material desires. It's not Anyabla <laughs> But luckily, Nanda Maharaj's family is Krishna, so it's become, it's actually the Anyavilas Trashul, Krishna Mushila, because it's in relation to Krishna. So Nanda Baba, he was deeply praying to Lord Narayan, but remembering his son with great love. At that time, some servants of Varuna, they came there. Varuna is the god of the water. They came there. And under the water, they grabbed Nanda Maharaj and they pulled him under the water and he disappeared. At that time, the men who were with Nanda Maharaj, his brothers and others, ah, where is Nanda Maharaj? Where is Nanda Maharaj? And they were diving in the water again and again, swimming, trying to find him. But they couldn't find him. And they came out from the water, they were very desperate. And in a very desperate mood, they returned to the village. And when the villagers heard, they said, we should all go and look. So Krishna and Balaram came also. And they came on the bank of the Jibun. And Krishna had tears in his eyes. Where's my papa? Balaram, you stay here and give consolation to the bridge buses. Just like when Krishna was in the coils of Kaliya. The only reason the bridge buses stayed alive was because Balaram was there, giving them some consolation. Because Balaram, he has Chitba, spiritual potency, such that even though generally he has the Abhiman, I am a cowherd boy, but the Leela Shakti sometimes inspires him and he knows, oh, my little brother is Bhagavan. So he can stay calm and give some assurance to the others. So Krishna told Balaram, you should give some solace to the others. And then Krishna tightened his belt and jumped into the Jumana and disappeared under the water. 
In the meantime, the ladies arrived there a little bit late. They came running, but not so fast as the men. Huh? Madhya Yashoda arrived there. Oh. Balaram, where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? And Balaram said, he's, he's gone in the water, don't worry. He's gone to bring back Nanda Baba. Then Rohini Maya started hitting Balaram. <laughs> said, oh, Mother, why you stop hitting me? <laughs> Please, Krishna will, Krishna will be safe. He'll come back soon. And all were waiting. They were thinking, is this a dream? Is this real? Is it some illusion? Am I becoming mad? They were so deserved, disturbed with anxiety waiting on the bank. But in the meantime, what happened? The servants of Baruna bought Nandamara. And Nandamara was still in Samadhi, remembering Gayatri. He didn't know anything. They brought Nandamara to Varunalok. Now this Varunalok is not a planet somewhere else. But rather, in a lake of the Jamuna, in a deep hole under the ground, Varunadev, by mantra, by mystic power, had driven out all the water from that hole and established a very beautiful opulent palace there. So just as no demons can enter Brindavan, so no demigods also can enter. They don't have brain, how can they live there? But just as Yoga Maya, when it was necessary, attracted Putana and brought Putana to Vrindavan for the sake of the Lila. So in the same way, Jogamaya had previously inspired Varuna to come and make his palace and kingdom in a deep hole underneath a lake at the bottom of a tunnel in the Jogu. So the servants of Varuna, they brought Nandamaraj unconscious there and they put him on the ground. Then Varuna, he looked down and he saw First he saw that Nanda Maharaj was wearing very plain white cloth. Why? He was doing uh, the Dwadasi Brat and the Narayan Puja. So he's wearing very plain white cloth. And he was wearing a garland of lotus flowers with Tulsi in them. So the first thing Varuna Dev noticed that this is a Vaishnava. Oh no. My servant, because the, the master will get the reaction of the deeds of his servants. So that my servants have made a, an offense to a Vaishnava and he became afraid. And then he looked closer, and then he realized even more, oh no, it's Krishna's dad. Now we're in big trouble. So Varuna told his servants, oh, pick him up and place him on a beautiful bed. So with great respect, they picked up Nandra, he was still in trance. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of Krishna. And he was lying on the bed. In the meantime, Krishna dove into the water and he was swimming. And finally he came to the tunnel where there was no water and he was running down the tunnel. And even though Krishna is Shamkala, he Shamsunda, but he was so angry, he was red. <laughs> he was Raktasunda, <laughs> not Shamsunda. Barun Dev, he thought, I'm not waiting here in the palace. I'm just going to go to the entrance to the tunnel and I'll be the first one there to give Dandavat Pranam to Krishna when he arrives because I'm sure he's not going to be very pleased. So Baruna Dev with his associates was standing at the entrance to the tunnel and Krishna was running with great anger. And as Krishna approached him, Baruna Dev, Oh my Lord, hey Bhagavan, my Pranam's to you and he fell down on the ground again and again. Please forgive me, please forgive me. Then seeing his humility and his repentance, then Krishna he calmed down and his redness started to go away and his sharp color began to come back. And he said to Varunadev, if a powerful person punishes a very insignificant person, then that powerful person's stature is diminished. His status is diminished. So I'm not even going to bother to punish you. Just show me, where's my father? The servants of Varuna, they put down soft, beautiful silk cloths on the ground. They were rolling them out as Krishna was walking. And Varuna Dev said, My Lord, walk this way. So he led Krishna to that place where Nanda Baba was unconscious. And Krishna saw his father. 
and tears came in his eyes. Oh, Papa. And the, the smell of Krishna entered into the nostrils of Nanda Maharaj. He was absorbed in remembering Lord Narayan, but when the fragrance of Krishna entered into his nostrils, he opened his eyes and he sat up and Krishna bowed down and touched his feet. And Nanda Baba embraced him. And then Nanda Baba looked around. Krishna, where are we? When Nanda Baba saw the opulence of Varuna Lok, beautiful, like the palace of Indra, Nanda Maharaj could not believe it. What amazing place is this? So then Nanda Baba saw that Varundev, he was offering prayers to Krishna. He said, Namaste Paramatmane, my obeisances to you. You are the super soul in everyone's heart. You are the all-pervading Bhagavan. And Nanda Baba was surprised. Where are we? Krishna looked at, that's Varuna Dev. And this is Varuna Lok. Anyway, let's go home. Krishna didn't want to stay there. Krishna took the hand of Nanda Maharaj and he was then taking him. And Nanda Maharaj was... Okay. He was so amazed. So Varuna with some servants and giving, giving gifts also to Krishna and Nanda Baba accompanied them through the tunnel and then Krishna quickly took his hand and they came out from the water. And then all the bridge basses who were as if dead on the bank of Jamuna, they came back to life and began to say, Jai, Jai! And they were singing. Go in the Jai Jai, go Pal Jai Jai, go in the Jai Jai, go Pal Jai Jai, go in the showed her she'd fainted, she couldn't stand up, she had four sakis on four sides holding her. Krishna said, where's my mama? And then Krishna went there and touched the lotus feet of Yashoda and embraced her and she also came back to her external senses again. So then Nanda Baba and Krishna distributed gifts to their associates, the divine celestial gifts that were wondering, where did he get these things from? So some of the coward men, they, they took a very nice white sheet and they put it on the ground and invited Nanda Maharaj to sit there. And they all sat around him. And said, tell us what happened. And Nanda Maharaj, he said, uh, I went to Varunalok. Some servants of his took me there. And then Krishna came. And you know what? Varuna was praying to my son. Namaste Paramatmane. Obeisances to you, you are the Supreme Lord. Krishna was watching this. Nanda Maharaj was telling this fantastic story. All were around him listening and they were all astonished. And Krishna was thinking, oh, Alas, alas. I cannot reciprocate with these bridge buses. Asian Gosa Nivasi Nam Utipabam Krishna Tirate Itinas Jaito Vishva Falak Palam Tadaparam Kutta Payam Muyati Sri Vesham Apiputanapi Sakalam Tameva Deva Pita Tadhama to Surit Prayatma Tanaya Pranasayas Katakate As Lord Brahma, he prayed. Oh my Lord Krishna. How can you reciprocate with the residents of Vrindavan? Putana just disguised herself as a resident of Vrindavan. She came to kill it. But just for dressing up like a Brajbasi, what did you do? You sent her to Golok and made a vow that all of her dynasty, also her children and brothers and sisters, they should also go. So you gave yourself 
to put in. So I don't know what it is that remains for you to give to these bridge bases because these bridge bases, Yadhanato Surit Priyatma Tanaya, they have their body, their mind, their homes, their wealth, their children, their family, everything is completely dedicated to you. So if you've already given yourself to put in what's left over to give to those who are so completely dedicated to you, I don't know. Brahma was wrinkling his nose like this. Meaning, Krishna, I think you must be indebted to them forever. So in the same way, Krishna was looking at his father, telling the wonderful story, and everyone being amazed. And Krishna was thinking, actually Varuna is an insignificant devotee. His abode is nothing. A material place. And we are, and Bridge Bass is living in Chintamani, Prakarasan, Mashukalupa, Riksha, Laksha, Vriteshu, Surabira, Vipali, and Lakshmi, Sasa, Sata, Samurama, Satvimana, Govinda, Mari, Purusham, Tamaham, Bajan. In Vaikuntha, they have Chintamani. But in Vrindavan, every dust has the power of Chintamani. In Vaikuntha, they may have a Kalpa Briksha tree, but in Vrindavan, or to speak of all the trees, even the little shrubs and weeds in Vrindavan have the power of a Kalpa Briksha. In Vaikuntha, there's one Lakshmi Devi on each planet, but all the gopis of Vrindavan are the origins of all the Lakshmis. So, how opulent, how beautiful is Vrindavan? And Barun Lok is nothing. But because Nanda Baba is so absorbed in praying, in love, he sees the Vrindavan, just thought this is my home. I'm a dairy farmer. And when he goes to this insignificant place of Ruler, he thinks, wow, this is really opulent. Amazing. Why? Because of praying. So Krishna, his voice was choking. And he was feeling ashamed. Alas. The way that Nanda Baba and the bridge Basis love me. In complete obliviousness to my opulences and the opulences of Braja. I have no power to love them in the same way. Though I am Bhagavan, having so many opulences. Krishna's thinking, my greatest opulence, my highest opulence is what? My subordination to the bridge passes. That I am submissive to them, that I always just want to serve them, that I can never repay them. Of all my qualities, this is the only one which is important to me. So Nanda Baba, he was very proud. And he was saying to the others, Oh, is anyone in this world, does anyone in this world have a son? To whom? Varuna. The God Varuna is offering prayers and saying Namaste Paramatma. <laughs> <laughs> Only my son. <laughs> he was very, not, he's, he's not thinking that Krishna is God. Only he is proud of his son. No one else has a son like this. So then other bridge Basi said, You know, remember, Gagacharya said, Tasman and Yante Narayana Sumo Gunai. That, hmm? oh Nanda Maharaj, your son is, has qualities just like Narayan. Hmm? So he said that a long time ago, and now we're actually experiencing it. <coughs> then one of the bridge bases said, if you had a chance to meet Narayan, then what would you ask him? Then bridge basi was thinking, there are no farmers sitting around having a discussion. Hmm? He said, I ask him, can you show me Vaikuntha? Mm. Hmm? Well, Krishna has qualities like Narayan. Let's ask Krishna. So then the bridge buses, they came to Krishna. And they said, can you show us Vaikuntha Krishna? They, I, they don't know whether he can or not. <laughs> They're just curious. So then, Krishna said, yes, I will take you to Vaikuntha. <coughs> because Krishna had a plan. He was thinking, these bridge passes are so glorious, they don't know it. 
They are thinking that they, they are my eternal associates, but they are thinking they are conditioned souls. And by countries, up there so far and inaccessible for us fallen persons, us villages. So Krishna was thinking, I want to show them their own glory. So Krishna said, yes, I'll show you Vaikuntha. So then those men who were listening, they told all the others and the news spread everywhere. Krishna said, you can go to Vaikuntha. We're all going to go to Vaikuntha. So then some old people, they said, no, no, this is not, this is not good. Because in, in Vedic culture, if you say someone went to Vaikuntha, it means they died. <laughs> right? It's a euphemism for dying. Do you want to go to Vaikuntha? No, no. It means do you want to die? But still, actually, in Braj, there's a saying that, that my death will be a happy day. My death will be a happy day. When the ignorance is there, when the ego is there, then we are afraid. We have the abhinivesh, the fear of death. But the Vaishnavas' hearts are pure. Oh, my death will be a happy day. I will meet with my Ishtadev. So, the old people came to Krishna and said, Do we all have to die? Krishna said, No, 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 you don't have to die. Don't worry. Come with me, we will go to the Brahmarad. So then, on the last day of Kartik, usually on Brajmanta Parakram, on the last day of Kartik, we go to Brahmarad, because that's the day that they went. So Krishna <coughs> took all the bridge buses to Brahmarad, one lake on the bank of Jamuna just near the Ashok, but the Ashok Ban. And he told them, everyone, go under the water. And when the bridge passes, submerge themselves under the water. Then, they came out, and they experienced Brahma, the Brahma Jyoti. They didn't like it there. No seva. <laughs> they heard Krishna, go under again. Again they went under the water. And they came out, and they saw Vaikuntha. Lord Narayan, four arms with his associates, surrounded by all the demigods and opulences. And then again Krishna dunked them under the water and they came, they came out. And this time Krishna was showing them Mahavaikuntha. That is called Golok. Golok. Mahavaikuntha. There's a great mystery that the Golok is a planet. And the outer, that is called the Bahimandal, the outer effulgence of the planet is called Golok. And then within that, there is Dwarka. And within that, there is Mathura. And then within, in the center, there is Braja, or Prindavan, Gokul. So, those who serve Radha and Krishna in Vaidhi Bhakti go to Golok, the Bahimandal, the outer effulgence of the planet. Where there is opulence, Aishwarya, and where there is Swakya mood, like Radha Krishna, like Lachmanarayan, they're legally together. But in the center, in the Antramandal of the planet, that is Braja. And there is Kevala Madhurya, pure unalloyed, unalloyed sweetness, and no one has a clue that Krishna is God. Or even that they're even in the spiritual world. They think they're on earth. And there is a Shuddha Parakya Bhav. Where the gopis are married to others. And they have to transgress all the boundaries of religion. To meet with Krishna. To please see Krishna. So how they did that to do a count now. Soon in the Rasalina. So... Krishna took them to Golok and there in Golok, because there's Aishwarya in that Bahimanda, Krishna was sitting on a beautiful throne and he was surrounded by Avarana, that means coverings of the Vedas personified, were offering prayers to him. And around them there were so many demigods. And the bridge Basis also had their Prakash forms, their Vaibhav Prakash, opulent forms, there in that Golok. So when the bridge buses arrived, with their pagris, with their sticks for the cows, and their ropes, <laughs> they rubbed and they saw their, themselves there, but all in majestic opulent forms. 
who are these people? I seem to recognize them, but there's something different about them. And then they looked and they saw Krishna. Krishna was sitting there very grave. Accepting the prayers of the Vedas personified. Brijabhasi thought, what kind of place is this? Whenever Krishna sees me, he's go. Papa, there you are. And he comes running. Oh, my dear, show this thing. When Krishna sees me, oh, my dear, give me some milk. Give me some maka. But Krishna is sitting. He's not coming to us. Then Rich Basi said, I have no hunger. I have no thirst. There's no hunger or thirst here. How will Madhya show that she cannot stay alive? How will she stay alive without feeding Krishna? <laughs> She's always thinking how to feed him. So the bridge buses, when they went to Golok, they didn't feel comfortable there. So then they felt Krishna pulling them again. And they were in the water, and they came out from the water, and they were back in Braja. And now they are back in Braja. They saw the beauty and the sweetness of Braja. Actually, there's no difference between Bauma Braja, the Braja on this earth, and that innermost portion, the Antra Mandala of Galuk. There's no difference at all. Some persons think that Parikiras, Krishna's unwedded love, love with the gopis, is only in this world, and then at the end of the Lila, Radha Krishna married, they go to Galuk and everything there. There's no uh, problems. But actually, as there's Parikya here, there's also Parikya there. Because this place and that place are the same. Bridge Vasi say, Ya hi, Ya hi, Nishchaya kahi. Here, here. Definitely I am saying, stay here. Don't think, when you live in Vrindavan, don't think of going anywhere else. You're already there. This Vrindavan, there's nothing more than this, nothing more sweet than this. But not the Vrindavan we see with our ordinary vision. With the Vrindavan we see with our ordinary vision is what? Hmm? Mosquitoes, <laughs> beggars, monkeys, rats, dust, smoke. But when a person is in Vrindavan and doing bhajan, then the Dham reveals its swarup. Chintamana bhumi kapa mriksha bhayam this Vrindavan in this world is Chintamani Bhumi. The trees are Kalpa Riksha desire trees. Krishna's Leela is going on there every day. But when we look with the Chama Chakshu, that means eyes made of meat, then we think that Vrindavan is Prapancherasam, the same as other places in this material world made of five material elements. But actually, Srila Rupa Goswami said, Ato, ata, uh, Ataha Prabhu Priyanam Cha Dhamnas Cha Samayasya Cha Abhi Chintya Pravada Tvat Atta Kincha Na Durgatam Just as Sri Krishna has is full in six opulences, so Krishna can expand and be everywhere. He can be smaller and supposed to be anything Krishna can do. So, Atta Prabhu Priyanancha. So, the associates of Krishna are like that also. They are in this world right now. Madhya Shodri is there in Nandagam right now. In one form. But in every universe, she's in Nandagam. And in the spiritual world, she's also in Nandagam. And in the spiritual world, in many prakashas. And all the, just as Krishna expands and is everywhere, so all the associates are like that. Dhamnascha Samayasya Cha. And the Dham is like that. Vrindavan there, Vrindavan here, Vrindavan in all the universes. Just as a yogi has the Mahima and Anima can become big and small. So when Radha and Krishna, they have to go from Nandagaon to Govardhan, it's many miles. But they go there just in a second. Why? Because Vrindavan Dham has the Anima City. The power to become small and they quickly run there. And then afterwards, Mahima City becomes big again. So no one can catch up and find out what they do. <laughs> <laughs> so all the mystic powers that are in Krishna, they're also in the Dham. And also Samayasaja, also in time. In the time there. In the night of the Raslila, everyone went to sleep. 
It was only eight hours. But for Radha and Krishna and the gopis, it was a night of Lord Brahma. Billions and billions and billions of years. Hmm? Why? Because the time in Vrindavan also has an anima and mahima city. It can become big and small according to the Lila. So, when Krishna brought the bridge buses back to Braja, and then they experienced the sweetness there, and they felt at home, oh, this place is more wonderful than Vaikuntha, Maha Vaikuntha, than Galok. Now, Shukadeva Goswami has just been telling his pastime. And now his heart is just bursting. Braja is so sweet and so beautiful. Beyond the Swargalok, beyond the Brahma Jyoti, beyond Vaikuntha, more beautiful than Galok. In fact, Rupa Goswami said, Yattu Goloka Nama Syat Tatcha Gokula Vaibhavam Tadatma Vaibhavatanstya Tashyatanma Hinam Matahe Which means that Goloka is the Vaibha of Prakash. It's the effulgence of Gokul, of Vrindavan. It is the opulent manifestation. And the highest glory of Gokul is, the highest glory of Gokul is, if you ask Gokul, what is the, sorry, Golok, if you ask Golok, what is your highest glory? Then Golok will say, my highest glory is that I am the Vaibhav Pakash of Gokul. <laughs> <coughs> so when Shukadev Goswami was overwhelmed with the sweetness of this Bauma Braj, Braj on earth, the Dham, then he wanted to describe the sweetness of the Dham and Dhami. Dhami is Krishna, the predominating personality of the Dham. And though he had described Nandagam, he described Gokul Mahavan, but he had not described Brindavan, that is the Yoga Pit, Brindavan Yoga Pit, the place of the Rasalila. So because his, in his realization, Shukadeva Goswami had just come from the opulence of Golok down to the Vrindavan on earth and he was overwhelmed with the sweetness. He thought, I have not described the sweetest, sweetest part of that dhamma. So then, as Sukadeva Goswami was speaking to Parikshit Maharaj, the beauty of Vrindavan manifest in his heart. Krishna lives in Nandagam. Radharani lives first in Ravo, and then in Varsana and then in Yavat. But this Vrindavan is some distance from them. And how is it? It's just like a bangle. Sometimes ladies wear a thick golden bangle and it goes around, but it doesn't go all the way around. There's a gap. There. So Vrindavan is the, surrounded by Jamuna, like a bangle on three sides. And you can only enter from one side. That's the Chachikar road. Right? But otherwise, you can see. If you know, Vrindavan comes this way, and then goes, the Yamuna comes this way, then she goes around Vrindavan like this, and then back like this, but doesn't meet, and then goes off in another direction. So Shukadeva Goswami saw this beautiful Rasa, Rasa Mandala of Vrindavan, surrounded by Yamuna on three sides, and it has four gates. On the eastern gate, there the gatekeeper is Brinda Devi. On the southern gate, the gatekeeper is the uh, servant, assistant of Brinda Devi, Vrindarika. And on the western gate, another assistant of Brinda Devi, Meena. And on the northern gate, Murla, another assistant of Brinda Devi. In the center of Brindavan, is the Anangaranga Kunj. And there, it's surrounded by eight petals. And upon the eight petals are the eight sakis, the Lita Vishaka, Chitra, Champakalata, 
Tongavidya in the lake, Ravidevi and Sudevi. And around them are the kunjas of the Astamanjaris, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Kasturi Manjari, Manjulali Manjari, Rasa Manjari, Champak Manjari. So this beautiful Rasa Mandal and Yoga Pita Vrindavan began to manifest now in the heart of Shukadeva Goswami. And because Shukadeva Goswami is absorbed in the mood of the Sakis, then he cannot check himself. It's the nature of a Saki. When they have a feeling, it has to come out from their mouth. So he, now Shukadeva Goswami, he wants to speak and describe the beautiful pastime in that place. This is really Harikata. You know, Shamarani was saying yesterday, there are three levels of speakers. One who is already from the Lila, they come to this world and they speak. Then one in this world who has realization of the Lila. And then one who has no realization. He is speaking, but this is not really the Rasa Kata, Lila Kata. The actual speaking of Rasa Kata, the actual speaking of Lila Kata is the manifestation of Lila. Harikata is a seva. Why? Because when a devotee is overwhelmed with prema rasa, wants to describe a particular pastime of Krishna, then his desire, as he's describing, actually makes Krishna perform that pastime. And Krishna enjoys that pastime. And the cause of Krishna enjoying that pastime was that devotee speaking. Therefore, actually speaking Harikata is seva. Or, it can be the other way around. When, when do we have to end? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Alas, alas, we just started. No, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, okay. <laughs> oh, tomorrow. <laughs> so, otherwise it can be the other way around, and that is that the devotee is going into bath and he sees Krishna and Radhika performing a lila, and then that Lila Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Manubich Charitra. Manubich Charitra means the pastime of Krishna Mukarita transforms into a narrative and comes out from his mouth. So the Lila is descending in a vocal form. And then it goes from the lips of the Guru into the ear of the disciple. And then that Lila, which is Mukarita, turned into a narrative, transfers back into the Lila again in the heart of the disciple. And that is called he. chanting or speaking Harikata and hearing. That's actual Sravanam and Kirtanam. And Smaranam. <laughs> we use these words hearing, chanting and remembering. But actually we should not use them lightly. This is the actual meaning. Without Spurti, we are not hearing, we are not chanting and not remembering. Without vision. There's a saying. Anubhav ke vina. Sabajaga Anga. Without realization, the whole universe is blind. Hmm? Oma Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Jnana Salakya. I was blind and Gurudev opened my eyes. So, without vision of the Lila, seeing the Lila, or one who has intense praying when they speak, they make Krishna do that Lila. And Krishna relishes it very much. Hmm? Without this, the whole world is blind. So, it is said, Nama Gani Nikat Shama Shama Prakat. Nama Gani Nikat Shama Shama Prakat. Nikat means close by. When we are close by to one who is chanting the pure name, Nama Gani Nikat Shama Shama Prakat. Then Sham and Shama, Krishna and Radhika, they manifest there. Otherwise, it is also said, Tata Ute Parda Ute. Uttay means beginning or rising. So when the part, when the katha begins, then part of Uttay, then the curtain rises. Exactly like in a theatre. When you go to a theatre, the audience sits down and then there's a pit at the front and the, the orchestra tune their instruments and then the conductor comes and then he begins. 
And the music begins to play, and the curtain rises, and when the curtain rises, everyone in the audience sees <coughs> another world. So part of day, part of day. When the Harikata begins, it's exactly like the curtain rising. And all those who are the Bhakti Adhikari, qualified in Bhakti, they're sitting there, and they see the curtain rise, and they have the vision of another world, the Leela is beginning. So now Shukadeva Goswami, after narrating the pastime of Arunalok and coming back, he's absorbed in the sweetness of Braja, and he wants to tell of the most beautiful Rasamanda of Vrindavan. And now he cannot hold it inside, falling in the mood of the Sakis, it must, the Kata must come now. So Shukadev Goswami, when this Leela was coming in his heart, he bowed down his head and he prayed at the feet of Shimati Radhika. Oh, Shimati Radhika, I want to narrate your glories. You should know that this Rasa Leela is the establishment of Radha Mahima. The glories of Shimati Radhika. It is established here. Vyasadev, he was not satisfied after he had written, compiled four Vedas and all the Upanishads and all the Puranas and the Bhagavad Gita and Vedanta Sutra and the Mahabharat. He was not satisfied. Why? Because he had not manifested the glory of Radhika. He had glorified Krishna somewhat. Krishna is not pleased so much. But Krishna is pleased when Radhika is glorified. So this Rasa Pantajayi, five chapters of the Ras Lila, establishes the greatness of Prashupada. <coughs> but we should know one thing. The ex actual experience of Harikata, not just the speaking from memory and listening and collecting pieces of information, but the Patuti Parvati, the opening of the curtain, and the vision of the Dham. This experience only comes Yadrichaya. Yadrichaya is a very important word in Srimad Bhagavatam. It comes many times. When Prakshit Maharaj was cursed to die in seven days, he sat down on the back of the Ganges, many sages. But then, what happened? Yadrichaya! Shukadev Goswami arrived. When the Navi Yogendras came to the palace of Nimi Maharaj. Then Shukadev Goswami said, Yadrichaya. They came. When Angira Muni came to the palace with Narad, came to the palace of Chitruketu Maharaj, Shukadev Goswami said, Yadrichaya. What does it mean? Yadrichaya mat kathado jata srada duya puman. Na nirvino nati sakto bhakti yogusya siddhi daha. It is said that yadricha, if by some good fortune one develops a taste in hearing Krishna Kata, if one is not too attached to this world and not too detached from the world, if you are too attached to the world, that means you have karma adhikar, adhikar to do karma. And if you are too detached from the world, that means you have jnana adhika. But if you are neither too attached or too detached, that means you receive the blessing of a Vaishnava. And one has bhakti adhika. Otherwise everyone is in one of the other two groups. Exploitation or renunciation. But those who receive the blessing of a Vaishnava... So... Bhakti Yoga Sasitida, for those persons who develop strong faith in hearing Harikata, then Bhakti Yoga Sasitida, Bhakti easily gives them Siddhi, all perfection of life. But how do you develop the faith, the taste in Harikata? Yadrichaya. So what does that mean? Srila Jiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandhava explains, Yadrichaya Kena Api Paramasa Tantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha Jata Mangalu Dayena. It means 
the awakening of auspiciousness in our life that came from the association of Bhagavad Bhakta. Bhagavad Bhakta Sangvijat coming from the association. And those Bhagavad Bhaktas, they are Paramaswatantra. That means supremely independent. Supremely independent. Even Krishna is not supremely independent. Krishna is controlled by the love of his pure devotees. But the devotees, they are free. And they wander around in this world, going here and there. So what is the cause of Sadhu Sangha? The actual cause of Sadhu Sangha is the Swayra Charita. <coughs> that means the Sadhu's free will. Just by their free will, by their causeless mercy, they are wandering here and there, and whomever they need, blessing them. And by that blessing, gradually, they get some inclination towards bhakti. And if they become surrendered, then they can receive a very deep garda sanskar, deep impressions, which will make you forget your previous personality completely. And you'll have a personality of Vrajitasi. So, this experience, the actual experience of Raslila Gita, is very, very rare. It's very, very inaccessible. Any ordinary person without Yadrichaya, without the power of the mercy of a pure Vaishnava, cannot experience what is this Rasalila Kata. So, many examples have been given to illustrate. A person who can relish Rasalila Kata is like a Chataka bird. Actually, there are three birds that we have to become like them. One is the Chatak bird. The Chatak bird, as you know, it lives on raindrops. It doesn't drink any water. It will only drink water that falls directly from the rain cloud. But, if the water from the rain cloud is not available, in order to quench its intense thirst, to cool down his intense thirst, the Chatak bird can eat fire. Yes. They eat fire. Now you, you should know that even Garuda, the king of birds, does not have the power to eat fire. But the small Chatak bird can do it. It's, it's the Chatak bird's very exclusive and unique characteristic. So, those Vaishnavas who can digest, who can experience this supremely inaccessible and durlab, extremely rare experience of Rasalila Kata, they are like the Chatak bird. It's as if they have some unique quality, the power to eat fire. Everyone can do it. There's another bird called Kilkila. So the Kilkila also has a skill. If there's a waterfall coming down the mountain, but in that waterfall, there are little fish coming down also. <laughs> and the Kilkila bird is so, has such a skill that it can fly into the stream of the waterfall quickly and out again and go oh, and catch one of those fish. No one else can do it. It's extremely rare. To be able to do that is rare and inaccessible. So in the same way, it is extremely rare and inaccessible that a person can experience this rasa panchajayi actually. Some greed coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Try to be like the kill killer. <laughs> How can one become like that chatter? Oh, there's another bird. This bird is called the sahasik. This is the third type of bird. Sahasik. Sahasik means courageous bird. You know that sometimes a lion attacks his prey and eats the prey. And then after his belly is full, he sits there, but he has one problem. 
No dental floss. <laughs> the lion has some bits of meat in between his teeth, but he cannot get them out. So he's sitting there, and a small bird comes, little bird comes, called Sahasik. Sahasik bird. And the lion opens his mouth, and the little bird, the Sahasik, courageous bird, no one else can do it. <laughs> and the little bird flies into the mouth of the lion, and and picks away and removes all the meat from the teeth of the lion. <laughs> so the Hasik bird is so daring. Hmm? And he's satisfied by those small pieces. So, the ability to experience and relish this Rasa Panchadhyayi is extremely rare quality, unique quality. Hmm? Like the quality of the Sahasik bird, the quality of the Kilkila bird, or the quality of the Chatak who can eat fire? Hmm? Do you have the courage? Can you digest it? Hmm? Do you have the skill? It's impossible. But it becomes possible how? Yadritchaya. When the pure Vaishnavas are wandering in this world, and we develop the Rati, deep attachment and love to them, Bimal Paishnava Rati Upaji Ve Vasana Hui Veksi Srila Bhaktinam Thakur said O Shuddha Vaishnava, Bimal Vaishnava, pure devotee When will I have Rati be deeply attached to your service? And then Vasana Hui Veksi, all my material Vasana Samskars They'll disappear And I'll have a taste in Harikata and Harina so it is only by Kripa that one gets the unique quality to experience this extremely durlav, inaccessible and rare nectar of Rasakata, Rasalila. So now we're coming to the first word. Sri Shuka Uvacha. First, the how is it in <laughs> is it those? Sri. What does it mean? Sri Sukha. This word Sri is only used three or four times um, with anyone's name in the Bhagavatam. It's used for Lord Nishimadev, sometimes for Bhagavan. Hmm? But here it's used for Shukadev Goswami. Sri Shuka Uvacha. It means that. Shukadev Goswami is infused and empowered with the Kripa Shakti of Shimati Radhika and therefore he is Sri Sukha. And being absorbed in the mood of a Sakhi, then he cannot check. Now he is about to manifest this Kata. All of the other pastimes in the Srimad Bhagavatam are like the flow of the Ganges. Anyone can go and take bath in the Ganges. Sinful people, pious people, everyone has an adhikar for the other leelas of Srimad Bhagavatam. But for this Rasa Leela, this Rasa Leela Kata is like the milk of a lioness. So the milk of a lioness is very strong. It can only be held, if you put the milk of a lioness in your mouth, oh, you will be burnt. If you put it in a clay pot, it will crack. You can keep the milk of a lioness in a golden pot. Or, it's very tasty in the mouth of the lion, the lion cub. So, by Yadrichaya, only by the mercy of our Guru Varga, we can become like a lion cub. Try to become the cub of one lioness named Lalita Saki. <laughs> Lalita Saki is very ferocious. Try to become her cub. That's Rupa Manji and all the Manjis. They are the cubs of the lioness Lalita Saki. <laughs> also, 
Seeing the confidentiality of this Leela, don't become afraid and run away. So many people say, oh, this is very secret, I don't want to hear. Very common, we shouldn't hear that. Hmm? But try to become qualified. Be under the guidance of a pure Vaishnava and be attached and serve them and become qualified. Hmm? And then one, when one becomes the lion cub, then one can taste this milk. So this Leela is being relished by the associates of Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. Not only do they perform this Leela, but even they sit down and they talk to each other about this Leela. They sometimes perform dramas about this Leela as well to each other. So this is relished by the Parikars. And it's for them. You understand? It's for them. Just like once I went to the Florence and there they have a big medieval parade. So many tourists come. But the local people there, they don't care. They're not doing it for the other people. It's for them. It's their history, it's their culture. So similarly, this Leela is not done for anyone. It's not like Dhruva Leela. You know, Supreme Lord appeared because Dhruva was doing austerity, standing on the leg for six months, gave up breathing. And, and he stopped, he choked the breathing of the universe, all the demigods prayed, so Bhagavan said, okay, I better go there. So he went. It's not like the pastime of Dhruva. It wasn't done for someone else. It's not like the pastime of Gajendra, he's getting chewed up by a crocodile, he lifts up a lotus, like, oh my Lord, help me, I'm getting chewed up by a crocodile. Of course, Gurjendra surrendered. He didn't mind whether he would live or die. Pure devotion appeared in his heart. So the Lord appeared. But the Lord appeared for him. But this Leela is not done for anyone. It's their Leela. It's their private, confidential Leela. So, but, this Leela is Virodha Basapurna. That means filled with Virodha Bas, filled with contradiction, filled with paradox. Because on the one hand, even though it was never performed for anyone else, it's an internal, in-group meeting. But still, it has the power to give the greatest benefit to everyone else. Vikriti Tambra Tabadupi Dantra Vishnu Shukadev Goswami said that if a person with faith will hear again and again and describe how Sri Krishna is playing in the Raslila, Braja Bodhubi with the young newly married brides of Braja, then even if that person has some calm, some lust, some avidya, some ignorance in his heart. This Leela is so powerful that simply by hearing it, the praying will enter even into the heart which has ignorance and lust. And it will drive out all that ignorance and lust. And that person will become situated in pure bhakti. So this is the Viroda Basatvarna. How this Leela is filled with contradictions. In the sense that, on the one hand, it's confidential, it's private, it's not done for anyone, it's just done for those who are there, but at the same time, it bestows the greatest benefits on the whole world. It gives the Purushartha Shiramani. What is that? Raga Nuga Bhakti. It awakens the intense greed to relish the sweetness. This is the symptom of the awakening of greed. When you no longer calculate, you are without a head. Don't calculate and measure. Even one is not inspired by the injunctions of the scripture, but one is just a picture, waiting, waiting. When can I experience this sweetness in the exchange? between Radha and Krishna. Another point about this Qatar that's very important to understand. Once upon
upon a time, there was a person, and, so, and a demigod offered him one drop of nectar. So he said, yes, give it me, I'll put it in this straw. And he caught the drop of nectar in the straw, and he said, I'll take it later. <laughs> but later when he came and tried to suck it, nothing happened. It was all lost. So in the same way, we should know that this rasa can never be a commodity. It's not a commodity. It's not something you, that you can collect it now and then you'll taste it later. You have to taste it now. As you are hearing. If you don't taste it now, you will not taste it later. And if you taste it now, if you become saturated, immersed in it now, you'll be immersed forever. There'll be no end to that emotion. So, one should be very, very careful to take shelter. Radhika Charanarinu Bhushana Koriyatanu that person who takes shelter very humbly of the lotus feet of Radhika and decorates himself with her foot dust, he can easily attain Giridhari Sri Krishna. This is the, one of the qualifications for experiencing this rasa, for becoming like Sahasik bird, Chatak bird, or Kila Kila bird. Now it's already ten past six, big problem. <laughs> Only for those who want prashad. Uh -huh. So <laughs> <laughs> do? So we'll continue tomorrow. We'll sing one kirtan. We're just making introduction the little meaning of the word Sri. <laughs> I said actually for five days I'll speak on the first verse. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see if we can go further. But at least we've touched the first word, Sri. Remember what it means so we can continue tomorrow that Shukadeva Goswami took the foot dust of Radhika on his head and prayed, Oh Radhika, please, I want to reveal your glory. And then Radhika blessed him. And he became infused with the mercy of Shimati Radhika. And in his heart, he saw the beauty of Prishupanu Nandini. And seeing that beauty, Shukadeva Goswami's hairs began to stand on end. His body began to tremble, tears began to flow from his eyes. And because he was beautified by all the sattvic barbs coming from the ecstasy of the experience of Radhika's lotus feet, he's called Sri Sukha Uvacha. Go to pray, Sri Sukha Uvacha.